Recently I published a video called The Smallest CRT in the World and It Works and it's had overwhelming response. So today I'm going to do one on the second smallest CRT, another real small one, totally different design, also very unique and very cool just due to its compactness. When I made the video last week called The Smallest CRT in the World and It Works, I didn't realize the overwhelming response that it was going to get. This is the the final resting place for my little CRT in this plastic display case so that I can turn it on. I have a video input on here and this is actually the power supply that I've been using on it. But it lets you, it lets you see all the sides of the tube and the engineering marvel that it was. And this truly is the smallest commercially made CRT in the world. It was used in Sony camcorders going back to, well, I've got another camera here. This one actually, I don't know if you know if this camera works or not, but here's another camera. This is a 19, uh, what, what year was this one? About a 1992 a CCD TR81. This was the first of the Hi8 Handycams. And this is mine. This is the first camcorder I think I bought. Well, the first little camcorder I bought. I had some great big gigantic professional ones, but this is the one that I bought for my personal stuff. And uh, I don't know if it works anymore. We'll have to check that out. I fixed it once, but it, it hasn't been used in years, so it may it may be shot again. I may have to do another service on it. But this one uses essentially the same tube, right? It's this one here. Uh, this one, the tube was actually made by Citizen on this one, but the tube is identical to this one. Same size, and it's the same form factor. It's a rectangular tube. There was another type of tube, though, and here it is. This is the other smallest CRT in the world but this one's slightly larger this one here measures just over half of an inch and this one's a round tube and there are some real big differences between this tube and this tube in the camera that this one came out of which is one that I will probably look at I don't know if it works or not but it's um, it had this mask over the front to make it look like a square picture but it was actually a round tube. And a lot of cameras did use these round tubes. So it's, it's a half an inch picture, but you can see that the tube is actually larger than half an inch. It's actually two thirds of an inch if you measure the faceplate. Like the tube from the Sony though, it is magnetic deflection. I had some people suggesting that they had tubes that were electrostatic deflection. If there are some electrostatic deflected uh, camera pickup tube or camera viewfinder tubes out there, I haven't seen one. And if I have, it's been a long time. Most of the ones I saw were, were magnetic deflection, which this also is. It just has a different style looking yoke because it's a, a round tube. And um, I think the tube length on this one's about, no, it's a little bit longer. If we put the, if we put the face plate of the tube together, you can see that this tube is slightly longer. So this one still is the smallest commercially made tube in the world because the tube is slightly longer. But the big differences between these two tubes besides one being round and one being square is how the high voltage is delivered to the second anode. You see on this tube there's no second anode connector at the front of the tube. It's all done through the socket and you can see that the high voltage from the flyback transformer here actually goes into a shielded pin to deliver high voltage to the into the tube itself and it actually travels up the inside of the tube to the second anode inside the uh, the CRT itself whereas on this design the flyback transformer actually has a separate high voltage wire and it's connected to a connector on the edge of the tube to deliver the high voltage directly to the front of the tube so as far as being more like a conventional CRT well that would be this one this one looks just like the bigger tubes that you would have found in a larger television, exactly the same. This one here, no, not so much. But it's not like an oscilloscope tube because oscilloscopes use static deflection, electrostatic deflection, where they have plates inside. They don't have a yoke coil on them. This one here, we'll power this one up and uh, see what type of an image we can get off of this one. Now, of course, I could cheat and just plug it into the camera what fun would that be? Let's figure out what pins do what and uh, let's get a picture on this little set. One thing we should note about this little tube is this one was made by Mishusta Electric. It's got their little logo on there. So Panasonic made their own tube. Sony did not. 
Sony had this one made for them by Myo Myota. Also, if you look on the bottom of the shield, it says made by Mashusta Electric. And it has the CRT pin arrangement. So you get your heater. G2, G1, G3, cathode, and that would be a P. That would be your uh, high voltage. That's separated from the rest of them. So we connect up the red and the black to 5 volts because that's what it's going to require. And you can see we have a raster. Now the first thing you'll notice on here is that the edges are kind of cut off. And that's because when they put the mask on here, you want to make sure that you're not going to see any black. So when they put the mask on here, the picture is actually cropped by this mask that fits over the tube, which is something else that doesn't happen on the squared tube because, of course, you're only scanning a square image. The overscan would actually hit the edges where there is no screen, but on this one they have to actually put a mask on there. So I'm going to get a video signal on here. We can take a look at what the actual video quality on one of these little round tubes are. It should be pretty good. This, by the way, this flicker you see here, this is probably the top side of the screen here. That's uh, just the uh, shutter and the camera effect. So I've got to figure out which one of these is a video input. It's probably the white one, I'm thinking. I should, I should be able just to touch it and see something on here. This one has a lot more wires than the Sony. The Sony only had four. It had power, positive, it had ground, and it had video, and it had one to turn on the little light in the viewfinder. This one here doesn't. This one has got, uh, what do we got, uh, two, three, four, five, we've got six wires. And this one doesn't have any lights in the viewfinder. So I don't know what the other wires do, whether they're to turn on an on-screen graphic, which is generated on this board, or what they do. But let's figure out which one of these is the video input, and we'll get a video signal on here. So there's an image on the tube there. I have to kind of shade it from the light because they don't produce a lot of light. Although this one does have a brightness control on the side here, so I can adjust it. I can make this tube brighter. Don't want it to be too bright though, because you know the whole idea behind the CRT was that you got good contrast, unlike the LCD viewfinders that replaced them. These were much sharper. But uh, there's you get the idea of the image on the round tube. And then when they put the, the mask on it, of course, now you only see the image that they want you to see. It cuts off the sides like that. But as I say, this tube here, I can get the camera in closer so you can get a closer view of this tube. There's about the closest view I can get of this tiny little tube. I'm almost touching the uh, lens of the camera here to get in focus. This is just some stuff that I got off of uh, YouTube. I don't know where that interference is coming from. I guess it's from my unshielded cables that I'm using to connect it. But there's a... A view of the front of the tube as you can see the, the the actual corners are cut off which was a common um, problem with the rounded tubes because of course they want to try and give you the biggest largest image that they possibly can on the uh, the viewfinder <clears throat> and if they were to only scan it so that it was just touching the edges then of course the actual view would be much smaller. I'm trying to not get nailed with copy right here. That's why I'm kind of letting it blur here because I know sure as hell if I let this thing play I'll get nailed for something. Even though this is off of YouTube. Here if I hold the shield up against the bottom of the board here it tends to be better. It must be my little AM transmitter that's running in the... yeah that's what that is. If I hold the little... the little there's a little uh, shield here. If I hold the little shield up against the bottom of the board, that interference goes away. That's probably why they had that there, because it's prone to interference. But if we look at the circuitry on this set, I'm just going to set it down here. If you look at the circuitry on this, I'm just going to shut it off so I don't get zapped here. Again, it's down to basically a single chip construction. On the top side here, we have our, our single IC, which is this one here. 
It's an XRA 7148F IC01. This one has a few more components on it than the Sony. I, I think the little Sony viewfinder I showed before, the other one that's in the plastic box, I, I think it's, it's actually a nicer design. It's cuter. It has fewer parts on it. This one's got <clears throat> three electrolytic capacitors that I can see here on the side. And is there any on the side? No. It's got a tantalum. It's got a tantalum cap over here. Little flyback transformer. Little inductor over here. It's got a poly cap over here, but it's got three electrolytic caps, whereas the Sony version only had one. And on the bottom here, I've got a solid couple solid caps. But this one's also got a bunch of controls. I don't know what VR01 does, but uh, it's an adjustment for something. Could be a, uh, it could be a height control. Probably is a vertical height control. The uh, Sony didn't have any adjustments. I don't remember anyway. I don't think it did. Oh yeah, the Sony, the Sony one had a vertical height control on it as well. I can see it. I'm looking at it. It had a height control. So this is probably the vertical size. This one. Uh, the other two controls on the side here is uh, brightness and focus. Brightness and focus. The uh, I don't think the Sony viewfinder had any uh, adjustments for that. It was it was preset. But the biggest difference, of course, is the picture tube itself. This one having the high voltage delivered right through a pin on the back of the tube, and of course it being a round tube. This one came out of a working camcorder. Well, as far as I know, it works. We're going to do a video on that one. I don't know if it works or not. It might need to be fixed. But this one came out of a camcorder. So because it came out of a complete camcorder, it's going to go back into the camcorder just uh, in case I you know, ever want to do something with that camera, like sell it, especially if it works. Because uh, getting working cameras these days for people or uh, people wanting to transfer their tapes and stuff, although this was from a VHSC. So there's not as big a demand for a VHS-C camera as there is, a, say, an 8mm camera because, of course, the VHS-C tapes could go into a, an adapter and play back on our conventional VHS machine, whereas the 8mm tapes could not. So there's a little bit more of a demand for 8mm and high 8 cameras and digital 8 cameras because without them, there's no way to play the tapes back that were made with those formats so it's as far as value of an old camcorder goes the the eight millimeter format is considerably more valuable than the VHSC just because VHSC had that compatibility and you can go down to Goodwill and pick up a VHS machine for 10 bucks that works in many cases and well, that's it I just wanted to show you guys this uh, little small I'll call this one the second smallest CRT ever made because it's small, but it's not as small as this one. This one here, which I've got, I've got this one running now. I'll show you the picture on this one. And of course, there's the video off of the little Sony tube here. Let's see if I can get my focus a bit better. I think diameter-wise, this tube is slightly smaller than the other one because the other one being a conventional rectangular tube the yoke is a little bit wider on it than this one with the build up on the yoke here because this one requires a more conventional yoke with ferrite uh, it's, it's wrapped around ferrite uh, uh, supports whereas this one here is just wound around the tube so I think the uh, yoke is a little more compact on this one because it's, it's actually part of the tube it's strapped right to the tube itself, whereas this one here, it's a, a separate assembly that's been placed on the tube. But they're both damn small.
I think we can agree on that, that both of these uh, tubes are exceptionally small. Anyway, there it is. Second smallest tube in the world, and it works. Thanks for watching.